Network. What's up, guys, and welcome to the One Realm Podcast. I'm your host, Diego, alongside my co-host, Thomas. Morning, morning, morning. <laughs> and uh, we are actually getting towards the end of this series. It's time to cover Ar- Mortal Kombat Armageddon, a game that definitely has... Uh, has a lot of mixed reviews because it does have some good things about it, but there's definitely a lot of negatives. Um, we're going to talk about all that stuff, um, but I guess first things first, as always, we're going to be talking about our backstory with the game. So why don't you kick us off with that? Well, my backstory of the game was simply that it was depressing to me when I first heard about it. Mind you, at that point, too, I'm going to say maybe fifth grade now. Or at least going into the fifth grade. What is the fifth grade now? Fourth grade. I'm going into the fourth grade. And I know words, but I know what words mean. Like any any kid. And my brother tells me that Armageddon means just the end. And I was depressed when I said, wait, I don't want this to be the end of Mortal Kombat. I still have so much to play. Not story-wise, just I have so much I still want to play. Um, so that's one thing with it. So that was surprising for me at first, but I can say Armageddon definitely brought a lot of family members of mine together, friends and family, because, um, I remember being, well, first of all, it was just me, my cousin, my sister, my brother, and maybe my brother would get along on a lot of things, but one thing we did agree on was we both played more combat. And... We were all playing. That's one game that we get to, we love to do. Uh, it was awesome because we all made our own like unique character. I go more of the ninja look still, but it's just like it was so awesome to do that. Another prime example was, was when I, so where I live at, I live in Oklahoma, I live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we get all the weather, and I mean all the weather. Although we don't have yet volcanoes, but I wouldn't put it past this just yet. That being said, uh, we had an ice storm one year back in 2007, and it was really bad. Uh, everyone had no power. It was an ice storm. The only person in my family who had power was my aunt who was on the opposite side of town. And what she did, so what we did is we like, sent everyone over, all the kids to her house, and they... Pretty much let us. We brought the Xbox. We brought movies, food. So we just we weren't we weren't without. And when you have over twelve kids in your house in your small two bedroom apartment, I feel bad for my aunt then. But the good thing is, like I said, Armageddon was one of those games that literally every kid liked. So. More about Armageddon. So it was like. There's boys and there's girls, but everyone loved the game altogether. Mostly because my ex watched that. If I want to play more combat, we're playing fucking more combat. So, but that's just me as a whole with Armageddon. Like it brought, I really had a lot more friends I actually liked at the time, and it was just a good game to play. Then I agree there are mixed reviews. Some stuff I wouldn't have agreed on. Agreed with at the time it seemed okay, but. I wouldn't agree with it until after I realized, like, seeing once you have something better, you realize how it was going with Dawson. And that's what I mean most. The only thing I had a problem with Armageddon was the fatality system, which we'll get into later, but that's all I have. Yeah, I definitely the fatality system is was something that, uh, if you look at the name of it, Creative Fatality, it's it, it gets you excited, but the reality of it definitely wasn't the same thing. Um, but we'll definitely talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, my backstory is this game came out in 2006 and I was living in Italy at that point. Um, well, yeah, I still live in Italy, but that, I just, I'd been here for a year by then. And, um, I think the biggest issue was when we moved here, first of all, of course it was very expensive. So, uh, didn't have too much money to be spending on video games. And second of all, um, I actually had an American PlayStation. Now, I'm sure most of you guys probably know this, but <clears throat> consoles 
before the PS4, Xbox One generation were region locked, so you couldn't buy in a European console and play American games and vice versa. Same thing with Asian games, etc. You have to, so there was PAL, there was NTSC, etc. Um, so I couldn't actually play any games I bought here until a little bit later on. I think the first game I owned that was a, a PAL game on a PAL system was FIFA 06. Um, so and it was a little bit later on, so I didn't actually have the the chance of playing this game when it first released, and I didn't play it, I think, until 2010, I think, more or less, because I found it, um, I found it around here in a little shop, uh, and I picked it up as soon as I could. Yeah, because by the time I could afford to pick it up by myself and all that stuff, then you know it was already, it was already, uh, it already been out for a few years. Um, but yeah, uh, first impression I guess on the game, uh, I liked the fact that because I didn't have, I didn't own Deception, I didn't own Deadly Alliance, it was a game that gave me the chance to pretty much play every single character I could possibly want to play as. Now, there were problems with it because of the gameplay, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but the idea of having all the characters there was very, very cool. When I saw Creative Fatality right. and that stuff at first... <clears throat> we pretty much all had the same thing, but the creative fighter thing was also really cool. Um, and I liked a lot of things about it. The only problem was it it had a severe amount of, um, essentially, not a, not a crazy amount of replayability just because of the fact that there were no fatalities and the creative fatality system was so shit. Um, but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of it for me. Um, you know, like I said, didn't I didn't get to play when it first came out, so I played it in the build up to MK MK9. So played a lot later, a lot later in the in the in the cycle. <clears throat> so I guess we can kind of talk about gameplay because we've already brought it up a few times. And to kind of give you guys an idea of what this really was, um, essentially from a gameplay point of view, it was identical to Mortal Kombat Deception. The only thing that they really added from a purely during the actual fights thing is air combat. Um, you can see in the intro, actually, they show who is a Baraka and who's in this fighting Baraka? Kung and Kung Lao, that's right, where they have this oh. little, this weird bullshit thing where they're floating in the air, Dragon Ball Z style, and they're, and they're punching, kicking each other, <clears throat> shooting special moves. It just looks really stupid, um, especially in-game, but yeah, that wasn't I don't think that was very appreciated by anybody, but other than that, uh, it was it's essentially the same game as, as Deception from a from an actual combat point of view. The only difference I can say they made was that because they had too many characters was that they went from uh, everyone having three systems to just two. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, which I didn't dislike. Per like I I wasn't um, I wasn't angry about that because I always ended up using one system anyway so i wasn't too right. worried about that i always use the primary no matter what and in deception did the alliance um but another thing that they did do is like we said they uh, oh sorry one more thing because there were so many characters not only did they did they do uh do that did they remove one of the extra uh fighting style per character but they also basically had so many characters that fought the exact same way because there were so many characters and there was only, I don't know, what, how many fighting styles were there? Probably like 10, maybe 11, maybe 15. Um, Go through MK Daily Alliance. I'm not sure if they really added any in the section. I definitely checked in. But uh, Go off Daily Alliance, everyone had three unique ones. So it just depends on what they end up doing when it came to it. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to... F pull it up right now um, how many different ones all right well yeah but they definitely they definitely had to steamroll a lot of things to try to make it you know to fit everybody in there and fit everything in there so they a lot of the gameplay felt very similar so you ended up kind of at least me personally I ended up kind of understanding what three or four fighting styles I liked and then just kind of using them uh, more those often characters. than not, yeah. Using those to, based on the fighting style as opposed to the actual characters themselves. Um, let's see this one, two, three, uh, four, looks like five, six. Oh, there's actually three for each. No, that's Deadly Alliance, sorry. 
Mm -hmm. to say? Deadly Alliance. Why is it showing me Deadly Alliance? I went on. Hold on. Look at the roster. Yeah, Armageddon. Ah, uh, because they have like weird stuff with each character. Well, anyway, they have a bunch of. They have a bunch of weird ones. Let me see. Okay. All right, here we have for, for Armageddon. They have uh, this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so pretty much each character had their own. So I was wrong about that. It felt like well, it felt like there was a lot more that were. I think identical. some people might have changed theirs too. I know some people had. Like for example, Sonya had Taekwondo and Kempo and Daily Alliance. Yeah. And then, um, but I remember I'm trying to think of Night Wolf having Taekwondo and Deception. And I think since right now is a good time to as any just to tell people what I'm working on right now, so they don't hear just random stuff in the background. Literally thirty minutes before. I, Diego told me he was ready. Uh, FedEx dropped off my uh, gaming chair. So while we're doing this right now, where my attention can be split up for a little bit, I'm working on the base of this chair. And man, is it harder than I thought it would be. But I'm blessed and we'll keep on working on it. So let's keep on going. Oh, it's a nice fucking chair. Lucky you. <laughs> once, once it's all built, I mean, it's going to be really, really nice. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, so I think that the biggest, like, one of the biggest issues, because I think, like, yes, they have technically, for the most part, they have different names. There are some that that uh, go over for different characters. Um, but I think that the problem, the problem was that, realistically, like, they had different name styles and they had different stances, but a lot of the moves were pretty much identical. So you just kind of go with the ones that, you know, felt right, and, uh, and you just kind of go from there. Uh, so yeah, it was just kind of repetitive. Surprised you with this? I'm pretty sure you didn't know this. Carlos Pacino does not know all those fighting moves. Well, I mean, how can he? There's, you know, so many different styles. Exactly. Well, he's the mocap guy, though. He's yeah. Not. Well, more likely just looked at them and then just kind of copied them. Also, how many how many different ways are there uppercuts? They all look the same as well. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I feel like martial arts are a weird thing because realistically, there's a lot of stuff in martial arts, like real, like you know, traditional martial arts that are just completely useless. They look cool though, which is why you see them in video games and movies. Um. So I guess technically you don't really need to know them. You just have to kind of be able to look at them, reproduce them once or twice for the mocap, and then you're kind of done. It's not like it's nowadays, you know, where each character has their own, has their Special own, moves yeah, everybody style. moves different ways and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so the gameplay was pretty repetitive. But also talking about gameplay, I guess we just before we get into the extra modes, let's well, just kind of get creative like, fatality out of the way. Before we do that too, yeah, was Armageddon your first three D era game you played? Or... No, 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 no. My first three D era game was uh was Deception. Okay. The one that I actually played, yeah, was Deception. Okay. Played Deception in America. I'm thinking minutes for you guys. Uh, Armageddon and Deadly Alliance. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I got I played Deception, renting it from Blockbuster in the U S. And then when we moved here. We didn't, wasn't able to really get a lot of games except for stuff that they would give me because um, everything was super expensive in the town I live so the closest mm -hmm. game stop was like 45 minutes away well not 45 minutes like 30 minute drive away and it was a pain in the ass to get there and stuff like that so um, yeah so it was always a kind of difficult like the, the closest game store that was here that was like a, but it was an independent game store it was called Roxy Records and essentially, mm -hmm. like up until four or five years ago, when they went from being a game store to a shoe store for some reason, uh, they would they would basically still sell PS2 games like San Andreas and stuff like that. So super common games that aren't rare in any way whatsoever. They would sell them for like 30 bucks. And we're talking about when PS4 and Xbox One were already a thing. 
So yeah, it was it was extremely expensive to buy games here unless you went uh, about thirty to forty five minutes away to uh, to Olbia, the, okay. is the name of the city, to go to GameStop. Yeah, and this was of course before Amazon was a thing and stuff like that. So, so what it was a GameFly. A... Sorry, GameFly. GameFly is, doesn't exist here. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. No, 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 nope. Um, maybe in the. Maybe like in Rome or Milan or something like that, but I, I don't think so. I've never heard of it existing here. Uh, but yeah, so it was always a uh, it was difficult, let's just say, for for me at first. I got I usually got the the soccer games and stuff like that. That was what that was what we used to pretty much always get um, stuff that you could you could find for cheap because everybody had them and everybody bought them. Anyway, so moving on to uh, Crate of Fatality. Now, this on paper, I think the name got a lot of people excited because we figured, all right, maybe there's going to be different portions of the fatality and we can, like, edit things together and we can make our own actually badass fatality art. We can mix in the spine rip with who knows whatever else. But it turned out to be this whole bullshit system to where uh, if you could hit the right combinations, sort of, like, you can do your own... Per, your, your own personalized combos and stuff like that but if you do them right oh, cool. then you can build up and do a long ass thing but it was just pretty shit so you saying that it gives them more credit than what it really was what it really was is pretty much you get to do the special you do the special moves buttons again it makes them look, it starts to crowd it give you a timer so pretty much what it looks like it kind of reminded me of uh, two K's, WWE two K's, uh, promo machine thing, where it looks good. Don't get me wrong, but it's like it times you, and it's like, oh, you gotta make it sure it sounds good and it looks good, cool, and stuff like that. It's like, I mean, yeah, but still, it's kind of almost pointless if it makes sense. Yeah, I've never but. tried that. I haven't played a WWE two K. I I played very little of 2k16 because they gave it to us for free on games with gold and i think the last wwe game i owned was 13 wwe 13 so i haven't played any of the new ones um yeah. so i want to say it was six no it was 17 when we started that but my whole point of it though was still the fact that they print you press certain you have four options four or six options for a promo and with that, you just click and you just give it a time limit before they just pick them for you. And the correct fatality one, like you just press down back A, down back B, those types of buttons, and it will make inputs like different ways of a fatality. And I don't remember nor care to remember how far you can go, but it turns you 10 seconds to do the next thing to add to it. Yeah, and the, and the faster you, the, the farther you got in, the shorter time I think you had. Yeah, I don't know. It was always bullshit. I never, I never got to, uh, I never had the, the desire to sit down and learn the combos to get the, to get the highest one. I mean, like I watched compilations on YouTube and stuff like that, but yeah, I wasn't impressed at all. It was pretty, it was pretty fucking garbage. I think it was one of the worst things ever introduced in the game, but I think it was because, I think they actually confirmed this, it was because they had so many characters in it that they couldn't actually animate fatalities for each guy. For 61 yeah. characters. You know. Yeah, so they just kind of did this generic thing to where everybody did the same thing, essentially, depending on what you wanted to do. You had those set animations, and you can kind of choose from them. And it was funny because pretty much now, got, they did, got to the point where pretty much everybody did the same thing every time anyway. Yeah. Well, don't worry about it. That is one of the worst things they did, but they did one, did one of the best things ever, too. Motor Combat or Creative Fighter? Motor Combat. Motor Combat. Yeah, I agree. That is literally the best. Let's get drunk and high and play this game all night long. Yeah, it's funny. I actually, uh, because my girlfriend has only played MKX and MK11, so she's never played any of the old, you know, PS2 games that have a bunch of different stuff, and she enjoys the, you know, arcade fighting just because it's a good stress reliever, but she doesn't care necessarily about playing a fighting game story mode. But if we're playing oh. a game that's like more of like a beat em up, then she's a lot more interested in that. So tomorrow I think I'm gonna pull down the PS two and I'm gonna 
I'm going to bring down Armageddon and we will play through the story because I don't have Deception uh, anymore. I have Unchained, like I said, but I don't have Deception as a disc because it, it's like 60 bucks for some reason in GameStop here. I, maybe the the price hasn't been updated, but I don't know. Uh, on the internet. I can for example, um, I was looking for, so while we're on quarantine, uh, Vintage Stock, this is where I go on again, all my old games, they're closed down. So... I decided to look on Amazon and see like how much uh, I can get Armageddon for. I have Deception, I have Daily Alliance, I have Sean Monks. Wow, what's again going? I'm sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, I have Sean Monks, I have Daily Alliance, I have all the 3D era games. And the problem, and I looked for Armageddon real quick, and because I know I had it, but it's just missing again. This is why I shouldn't buy stuff. But it's missing, and I looked on Amazon. It was over a hundred bucks. Yeah, I don't know exactly why, but I guess it's rare. It is a rare game. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like for example, Death Jam Fight from New York. You don't play. It was a good game, and it's rare. You don't play Arm and Leg for it too. I know that one for sure. But I mean, if you go to Binstock, it's going to be like twenty or forty bucks. And I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with playing over a hundred bucks for this game. Definitely. Not. That's why I hope with the whole Scarlet project that it is, um, it just have like you can just download the games that on there. Like how you do with the Xbox One, you just buy the games online. I hope it's more like that way versus the, oh, you have to have the disc for it because then. I don't mind doing that either, but it's just one of those things. Like, if you get the whole installing the game again, I'm gonna lose my shit. <coughs> yeah, I agree. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm probably gonna try to pick up Deception sometime down the line if I can find it for a decent price. Just because. A price. Yeah, it's just right now it's hard to it's hard to spend over you know seventy bucks on a game that came out in 2004 that you've already beaten a million times. So. Exactly. Yeah, but. If I can find it for a good price, then I'll eventually pick it up. Because it is always good to have it and have all the games. If you want to plop them out, just play them. But uh, I guess it kind of is what it is. Um, so, yeah, you mentioned motor, motor, uh, motor Combat. And that's, I mean, there's really not too much to talk, talk about it. But I feel like it's it definitely... Mario. Yeah, it's Mario Kart with Mortal Kombat theme to it. And the addition of uh, power-ups essentially just being special moves. So, of course, Scorpion had his spear, Sub-Zero had his freeze, Jax had his ground slam. What did Melina have? Had, no, Melina had boost. Yeah. Brock had his side. Raiden had his lightning. Raiden had his Cyrus had a bomb. I want to say that Bri chose to do like the same thing like Jax almost. Which, I think it would be a great uh, better aspect if they actually used every character. Kind of like puzzle combat. It's now more fighting. It's like a literary, uh, fun game just to relax and everyone just everyone likes it though. Yeah, I think it's really really fun to be honest. I think it's the by far the best uh, the best side mode in all in all the Mortal Kombat games. Like of course it's only on a couple of them, you know, Deception and Armageddon. But I feel like it's one of the best side modes in gaming in general. Now, my actually this though, would you want that game, that version to come back? Sorry, what did you say? Would you want that to come back eventually? Absolutely, I would like I would buy it as its own separate game. If they Three. put the extra. And I think that's what we're talking about. We want like different games that don't have to be just story, just fun games to have and play. Yeah, like if but if they release it on like we... as a like on the Xbox. Uh, you know, on the, on the Xbox Store or something like that for over twenty bucks, and they had not not like you know, Mortal Kombat is in, Arm, in Armageddon, but if they actually put some time into it to make it each character, you know, a lot of characters, yeah, if you actually put a lot of effort into it, well, fuck it, I'd buy the shit out of it. Now here's the only problem I see right now. While we're gonna get in like an MKX or MK11 type game, is they keep going to like the more realistic version of characters. And on paper, that sounds great. I mean, everyone loves it. But the alternative side to that is, let's see, 
is the fact that you do have to, like, it looks too real to do it now. So on paper, it's good to have that. But on the other hand, it's like you would rather have it look like a more, make it look more cartoony, like how uh, Mario Party is. Well, yeah, I mean, I think if they're going to do something like that, then they're definitely going to have to kind of, they're not going to make it this like a, a realistic game. I mean, if you look at the other games in that kind of genre, there's um, Sonic Racing, whatever it's called, and that was, you know, just cartoony. Mario Kart's the same thing. So I think you can definitely do it. Um, I don't think they ever will, but I wouldn't mind it, that's for sure. And I guess that kind of covers it for the gameplay-wise, because there's really not much to say. It's literally deception with, you know, fighting in the air for a couple moves well, and explorer combat. Covers the gameplay. One last thing, because they did go back to the Tata thing with the Daily Alliance, but this time around, it was for everyone did the same exact moves at the end of the pyramid while you be blazed. Yeah, that's and right. No one and it means anything. So I know occasionally like this time we want to mention this before we even do that whole let's watch the ending thing with you. None of these endings are can at all. So the expectation now so there's no disappointment later. I mean MK nine literally confirms all that. That it's just complete bullshit. Oh. Everything that happens is just completely not real. So even Shao Kahn, when he wins, is not like it. Like MK9 at all. Exactly. Because Shao Kahn, he literally conquers everything, and then he goes mad. Because he has nothing else. Yeah, so don't be expecting anything anything that actually oh, makes sense going forward after Armageddon. Well, after Deception. Yeah, sorry. That's, yeah. I mean, like, anything that you see in Armageddon doesn't actually resonate in MK in the in the later installments. It's all just kind of retconned immediately. Yeah. Um, that was but before we do go into the story itself, I think we we've we've mentioned it already, but uh creative create what was it called? The creative fighter, is that what they called it? Yeah, creative fighter. Yeah. Like I what do you think about it? Because I have really fond memories of it. Oh, I do too. Don't get me wrong. Like you can make clear. I even see one person on YouTube a lot. His name escapes me, but he does a lot. He just does a lot of video games in general. And what he does is he would like characters, for example, who are not in the newer games, or they were in like a past game, or they're just characters that we want to see. He won't do like a whole backstory, but he'll make some jokes here and there, and he'll play it as them in Armor Gang, and he makes it make a character that looks like them. But other than that, though, um, that's all I see from it now. But I have fond memories of making my own. The one thing I will say is, you got like a slow game. You got a you create a character if you would, obviously, and then you got um, a bio slash you got your own bio slash engine. So you will make the character, and then you will make your own engine as well. So what what would you do if you won Blaze Power? Is that a question? Or yeah. you're, okay, you're you're saying that's what you do, right? <laughs> but you you want your own engine as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that idea. I like I liked the execution too because, like you said, there was so much you could do. You could pretty much make anything you wanted, and it there was so many different options. It was just it was just a really 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 well done thing and arguably the best thing about that game as in the one that had the thing that had the most polish in the entire game. Oh yeah, and probably the most attention too. Yeah. The only downside though is like the engine for the 3D era games as a whole suck. Oh yeah, I mean graphically they were just disgusting basically. <coughs> the hair was That's awful. Exactly. The gameplay itself sucked. Yeah. Yeah, I think. And like, you were like pretty much. And yeah, when you're doing a game like this, like you are too much. You're still in moves. Whenever you make your own thing, you're still in moves with other people. Don't think like you're being original. You're still in moves. But when you really move, you're still in there, just like so bland and ugly. Either. 
Yeah, I think it was. Um, I was listening to the the, the latest episode of the Nethercast where they were talking about Spawn, um, and they were talking about MK deception and all that stuff. And they were basically talking about how, like in in the three D in the three D era, you had the polar opposite of what we have now. Whereas now we have basically usually good oh, gameplay because like even though MK11. Uh, and MKX don't have amazing gameplay compared to the 3D era. It's just it's just sensational. So we right now we have good we have really good gameplay, really you know good well done polished gameplay and shit story. Whereas before in the 3D era we had good story for the most part and we had just shit gameplay. So the game wasn't fun to play, right. but the backstory was interesting. Um, and that's essentially the best way to break down the 3D eras. The gameplay was shit. It was just, it's, it's just horrible to play. The best writing they ever had, but yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's why, you know, most people that aren't like diehard Mortal Kombat story fans hate the 3D era. But guys like us, we, we, we still see them. Also, because taking into consideration, there's a lot of nostalgia because like Armageddon, not so much, but Deception, of course, for me, is the renaissance game in Mortal Kombat for you it also has a lot of importance too so it makes sense but for pretty much all MK story fans the 3D era even Armageddon has a lot of importance because when Armageddon came out we all thought this was going to be the end of the series because Midway was pretty much dead they had no money and uh, we had no idea if there was ever going to be another Mortal Kombat game so for all we knew this was completely canon Midway at this point was um I'm trying to think, because about a year or two ago, there was a big story about uh, people who own Smosh games yeah. on YouTube. There was a the equivalent of Midway that one. Okay. Where, like, they would, all they make all their money off of maybe two major properties, and they were using that to spend all, all the other stuff, like pay rent at the other places to do all this. Pay rent, really pay their employees, pretty much based off of what Mortal Kombat and their other biggest games were. Yeah, an issue like, was. Smosh that... really like was like Smosh was like their big. Smosh and Clever was like their bigger, biggest um, money bringers, and then they literally. That's like how like they were using their their checks to pay the, all the rent in five different areas the lights on yeah and uh, I don't know about Smosh and all that but I know I used to watch the hell out of them but then I stopped watching them for you know probably 2013 maybe 12 on so I have no idea what I'm actually happened to them bad, nah, I, don't I don't watch either like that either but yeah yeah no, I'm just saying like, I don't know that comparison's not there yeah yeah um, but what I can say is, um, I, of course, you know, Sposh, I'm, I'm sure they had, they started dropping in terms of views and stuff like that. And Mortal Kombat, you know, because the gameplay was so bad, a lot of people stopped buying them. And that was one of the reasons why Midway was unable to survive. And, uh, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. It happened. And, uh, you know, there was a whole thing around Mortal Kombat. Like, this literally could be the end. Um... So yeah, this, that's just kind of give you guys some context with it. Um, we're gonna go into the story very very soon, but we just kind of I just kind of want to let you guys know um, that the Deception episode was very very long. It was like four hours. The Deadly Alliance episode was pretty long, and the MK4 was definitely long too. And this one will definitely be probably around. Let's see, we're already at an hour. No, we're already at 33 minutes. So. Probably another hour and a half, more or less, this will be. So it'll be around two hours. Um, but we're going to do things differently this time because there's no way in hell you can cover 61 characters or 62 characters, whatever it is, you know, and, and do it in a, a t an amount of time that's mentally not just completely destroying for both us and you guys. We're just going to kind of watch the story over with you guys. Um... And just kind of give you our thoughts and watch do a watch along kind of thing. And I think we'll probably do the same thing for MK9 and uh, MK11 because we've already covered those two extensively. We'll, we'll definitely give you our thoughts as we watch the storylines. But for this game, and that that still remains to be determined. But for this one, we're gonna be 
just watching the watching all the cutscenes with you guys go over the story mode and uh, <laughs> and kind of just go from there because the, all the bios and all that stuff is basically non-canon anyway. So all the endings, no, anyway. no, the endings. I mean, that. yeah, the endings. I mean. So we'll just yeah. kind of. Well, this is one thing I wrote for this. So they originally when they put out the game, there was no bios. Yeah, so John Vogel read them all later. Huh? John Vogel wrote them all afterwards, right? <coughs> if you call 17 all, then yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, all the ones he did, he put them out afterwards. Yeah, after the game came out, after yeah. the Wii Sport version came out as well. But So at a later time, we will probably go over that. I might even just start talking about, like, in certain non-important clip cutscenes, we will talk about those just so I can fill in the blanks. Like I said, we can literally like this whole thing can be answered, summed up really fast too. But the fact that we were just let's all point that we can't go down reading each seven out of seventeen. Okay, well, like that, it's it, it's physically and mentally exhausting. And regardless of that point, you can want to make a clip. You don't want to, us to sit here and, and blindly read the stuff when we are when he's exhausted and not exhausted and not feeling the best either. But yeah, it's, it's a rough time right. for everybody mentally and in other ways, too. So, you know, I'm sure that most of you guys, that you're just looking for some entertainment and reading. If you want to read bios and stuff like that, then, you know, we, we will definitely be doing that later on. But for this video, for the sake of keeping it relatively watchable in terms of length and stuff like that, we'll, we're going to be doing it this way. Besides, MK Armageddon, the the conquest mode is, is where it's all at anyway at this point. Yeah. But give me one moment. Yep, you do your thing. I have two screws left. Well, I have two screws left right now. Yeah, I'm going to plug in my computer real fast. Um, as we, before we get into the story, what, now you've, you've said before, I think that you prefer this conquest mode, right? Yes, yeah. I do. And the reason I'll rephrase it again, so in case people don't know, um, I like this one a lot more better because of the fact that you can go through and it's more of a, it's either, like, so I can see why your girlfriend doesn't really care to watch story mode because it's the whole cinematic cutscenes and stuff. It kind of takes you in and out of with the fights in between. So I get on that format as well. I think this would be more her style though because of the fact that you are fighting the entire time. It's not like you're watching a movie, really. It's like literally, there. It's a beat 'em up, like a Batman Arkham in the game, almost. Not as elaborate, but similar. Yeah, you go from point A to point B, beat some, beat people up, keep moving, beat more people up. You're fighting the entire way, and there's puzzles you have to figure out as well. But there's death traps and stuff like that. So, yeah, I feel, I feel like, I feel like. Uh, like I've always preferred Deception, just because I I always felt like it was more fun to go around the realms, but and I st I think I still to this day prefer Deceptions like by far. But one thing that I will say is that upon upon reflection, it is in large part a tutorial, because you essentially just learn the moves of other characters throughout the entire game. That's pretty much what you do. You learn their moves and then you use them. And then you move on to the next realm. So a lot of it is uninspired, I guess you could say. The good thing about Deception was, like I said, the the, the world and exploring the realms. But I definitely feel like... Because, sorry, what? Deception is okay for me because of the fact that you got to... I think we said this so many times when we talked about the the, the conquest, the history of conquest and story most before. But I, like I said, I this every time too. Well, I'm getting, Deception is a good concept because of the fact that you got to finally see the stuff that we always dreamed of seeing. Exactly. You finally get to see what Outworld looks like. You kind of get to see what Earth Realm looks like, which is nothing like our Earth at all, trust me. It's literally, from what they showed you in Earth Realm, it's literally all villages. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Yeah, but so. after all that been done, though, and also I realized a big plot hole recently in Deception Conquest mode, which is well, Sub Zero is the Grandmaster in this one, right? Uh -huh. 
Well, the problem with that is the Deadly Mortal Kombat 1 hasn't happened yet. But he's literally the second person you train with. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. You're and they right. said you'll face the Grand Master Sub-Zero. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fun one. I just thought about that yesterday, actually, but... Well, yeah, that, I, never, though, I never thought about that, but it's definitely right. I usually am. Yeah, yeah, you are. Uh, yeah, pump this out. We'll be right. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, as you no set up, there. as you get ready for that, um, I just want to say one thing before, like when it comes to that, like what I was saying is, I feel like you know the the issue with Deceptions was that it was, uh, it was a largely a tutorial. Um, but the good thing about Armageddon was it wasn't necess- I don't think it was as long, either. But what it did have in its favor was, like you said, you're not just constantly walking around and then just doing a regular fight. You are actually having beat em up gameplay with combos and you have um as you go as you build up your combos you can do bigger moves and stuff like that so they it had a good little system to it and it was a di- it was a very very good change of pace to regular gameplay whereas in deception the, ex- the roaming part was fine but then when you went to doing the fights you were just using you were doing the same old mechanics but with other people's moves are you there Can you hear me? Caught. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I heard you perfectly fine. I couldn't hear this you at all. What's happening though? I couldn't hear you at all. Well, what's the last thing you trying to say? Uh, last thing I said was that uh, it was it was a diff- it was a good change of pace in the gameplay, and it, I think it's I said it, it gave you uh, uh, the uh, you know a, something different to do as opposed to Deception, where basically uh, you would go from it would roam and then do a re- or just a regular fight, whereas this had its own mechanics. Yeah. So what's the last thing you heard me say, though? Oh, uh, oof. it was before I said all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. So I got. I know, I know where to pick up from. All right. Go ahead, whenever you want. But the downside to this is that when it comes to what we're, what we're going to do this today is that you won't see the whole BM of aspect. I'm sure you're sure just the cutscenes being cut out. Just being the cutscenes that you won't need to see the gameplay at all. Which is not the best either there, but I'm saying that um, I enjoyed the whole BM up and roaming, death traps, and super difficulty it felt like sometimes uh, that I gave you. <clears throat> yeah. I and agree. once we eventually figure out how to to stream that game and record the gameplay for that game, we will do something like that. But unless there's a way we can, like, I don't know, the only way I could think of possibly doing it is um, using, if we can, do, if we can connect uh, Twitch with the 360. Well, I could technically do it no problem uh, if I had the right adapter. The only problem is, uh, as of right now, of course, over here in Italy, everything is in lo- is, is in lockdown, so I can't get the adapter. Um, I, you can technically you can order packages, but it has to be stuff that's actually, uh, you know, it has to be primary importance. So like food or or things that are for living. So an adapter isn't something I can technically do without any problems. Um, so eventually, I will definitely do that because basically, what I all all you as far as I can tell, all I need is a is a is an adapter that goes from component to uh, HDMI. Once I have that, then it's all it's all good. So we'll eventually do that for sure. But as of right now, what I'm going to be doing is 
uh, I'll have in the background. What you what you'll be seeing is, uh, or hopefully, unless <laughs> unless uh, you know by the time I edit all everything together, they tell us that they don't they don't want us to use the footage, which I don't think will be a problem. Um, what you'll be seeing is gameplay uploaded by, or sorry, the cutscenes uploaded by a channel called. Let me pull it back up. Uh, Gamers Little Playground. They have almost two million subscribers, so and they're verified. So what I would assume is that they're they're a channel that uploads a lot of a lot of uh, full cutscenes. Yeah, they have the same thing with MK versus DC and all that stuff. So yeah, they do that a lot. Yeah, that's for sure. Hold on a second. I have to go. There's cats outside. Hold on. Too bad to say everything I thought I was going to say. Otherwise, I have more stuff to talk about while he's gone. <laughs> Damn. Copro, aspetta, però ti copro, eh. Ok. Quindi vuoi scoperti? Eh. Sorry about that. Fucking massive cat fight. Sorry, what? Did your cat get, cat get another turf war? No, it wasn't mine. It was a bunch of them outside. I remember, like, last time your cat was, like, yep, yeah, screaming at a cat outside. I was like, really? Again? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's just... Here's my thing that happens. Here's my thing with your cat. I think you're a family guy. <laughs> I, I mean, he's basically... Peter that turf war with cat. He's, uh, he's basically like that, so... Yeah. I don't know. There's like a there was a huge cat fight. I actually think I sp stepped in cat spray that 
that this disgusting shit they spray. Yeah. Anyway, um, so you have the they have the cutscenes pull up. Um, literally, I turned hit next on it because I have it on my Ari program my TV. Okay. And I just have I just recently went to YouTube uh, Premium, so there's no commercials for me. I just gotta hit start. All right, perfect. Well, you can tell me when, and we'll. Well, I'll I'll, I'll go ahead and do the intro real fast, just for it, just to kind of carry back over to where we were. Oh man, we did the intro for this one. Though. I just realized this. What do you mean? Well, like this. Well, one thing I want to keep in mind is that Daily, not Daily Alliance, Armageddon did have the best cutscene. Um, intro cutscene. You mean the big, uh, big fight? At... Yeah. Uh, do we want to play that at the beginning or what? We'll do that at the beginning. We're, we'll fit it in. Okay. All right. Well, what we'll do is I'll put it in before we start the podcast. I'll put it in before okay. we start talking. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, before I edit it. Okay. Okay. All right. Well. All right. Ready when you are. Okay. All right, guys. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start watching the cutscenes. Of Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Now, as I was saying, you you should be able to see the cutscenes no problem. If all you hear is audio, it's because the people that uh, put up the video uh, requested me to not to not have it on there. So hopefully that won't be a problem. If you're seeing it, then what I just said is completely redundant. Anyway, so on on the count of three, we will start the epic story that is Mortal Kombat Armageddon. So one, two, three, play. All right, hopefully it's not too loud. I'm going to try to keep it a little bit lower so that you can mostly hear us. I recommend you guys play it in the background. Oh, it has the intro anyway, dude. Yay! Oh, perfect. We were just saying, oh, like, yeah. we were going to put it at the beginning. Many powerful warriors. You missed the whole thing. It's like, oh, to this. The one thing is, this is probably the best uh, intro we ever got. Yeah, I think intro it's... trailer. Don't yeah. give a damn. I, I, I think I still like Deceptions more. I mean, Deceptions more dramatic, but this one, like, you just see like entire way. Yeah, it, this has pretty much this has literally everybody in it. That's what's cool about it, and it's a uh, it's a big showdown. My question is, I just see some now. Gary still in the force of the darkness. So. Yeah. It's weird, right? Yeah. My biggest thing is always in like, so who's on whose side really? Oh, we got Tanya. So we got Tanya and Jay fighting in the background, and like I said, we can't even get that in real. And I do like the fact that they show the rivalries too. Yeah. Baraka and Kalafa and K2. Air combat. <laughs> Looks just so stupid. And that pulled off the shallow monks. Yeah. I know you haven't played it yet, so that's what I get that idea from. The only thing I say about the whole. Um, so there's some people in here who don't have no place to fight each other. You know, like Jared. Definitely touches me in the right spot. One that would make use of the combatants insatiable bloodlust. Like mods to flame. I will say though that the cutscenes do look pretty good compared to the compared to the in game you know, engine. Yeah. It's a lot better, yeah. But you mind for about from 20, uh, 2002 to 2011, well, yeah, that one kind of DC. From 2002 to 2011, this was like those characters where they look like to us. Yeah, thankfully That's not really things have gotten better. But... No, like faces wise, yeah, I agree, the faces are better, but I'm talking about... Like from a pure aesthetic version, like that's what Japan should be super buff. Yeah, yeah. Fun G is supposed to be a face C as hell. Aramac looks like a monk. At the apex of destruction. So one thing 
thing I learned last night, though, apparently this form of sing song back in MK2 at least yeah. is 19. 19? Yeah. He's supposed to be 19 there. Hatreds. Yeah. Okay. Like, obviously his age difference as well, but like the look of him will be what he looked like at 19 years old. Okay. I didn't know that, no. I found out yesterday on while I was on Discord. Zombie Lee. I always thought this was pretty cool. I know a lot of, a lot of people don't like it, but I always liked it. I know like a lot of people don't care for Zombie Lee, but I agree with you. I think it could have been done. I looked like, like a lot of the execution could be done a little bit better if they ran out of time. So. Yeah, that's for sure. That's the problem. Stuff. Then you can right here see Shang Tsung literally aging. Armageddon has begun. The good news is I don't suck my chair. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah. Well, my whole thing was like I wanted to make sure I can just sit down and enjoy, but not actually watch the rest of this story mode with. It. It is done. Haven and Dagon have been hidden. <coughs> Oren and Tara will be at their sides. I trust they will be safe in the caves. I only hope Shao Kahn shows no interest in them. It is unlikely. Attention, Attention seems focused only on Adenia. Only Adenia. The, pyramid the pyramid is completed. You are certain the battle will take place here, darling? I am. I have sent Blaze to monitor the realms. When the time has come, he will signal the dragons and the quest will begin. Are we doing the right thing, August? Your visions determine this course of action. So what do you think of August and Dahlia? Um, I think Dahlia is dressed, you know, in interesting fashion. Uh, considering he's extremely covered up and she's basically tits out but apart from that I mean I don't have too much to say about either one of them I'm not really a big fan but I don't hate him either they will prove their work before the elder gods they will bring honor to identity and to you if they survive we have equipped them well and the monoliths will hone their skills this must be done Dagon and Taven will remain dormant when they are revived Oh, hold on, there's Ciao, a fucking ad. Pause it. Oh, fuck. Okay. I'm a Zeus. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, what happened? Like, I'm, getting paid, to, to protect I'm getting paid right now to set up a chair and do podcasts. You saw the 608? May the elder gods watch. Uh, yeah, I'm at 608. Okay. Let's start. May the elder gods watch. All right, go ahead. Hold on. One, two. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. I'm going to anything from my phone yet. All right, right where you are. All right, one, two, three, play. Watch over them. Hey man, it is good to see you have awakened. Do not worry, your strength will soon. No, this is an idea I understand what? either. What happened? You were in the way this works, you mean? <laughs> well, for example, um, as we see, Tave is the way. And Dagon is supposed to be asleep too now. So look, when you still got his um his uh rock cooking, he it looks like he was that he was still asleep. Which I can see Dagon be what he is. Um, say like make it seem like he was still asleep, but the other dragon would still be there, right? Yeah, you would think so. No, this is all too strange. But I mean, you can't ask too much for the writing in this. 
I will send you to his well, as we know. <laughs> the thing is, like they did their their bios and the character stories, all right, but they did come conquest and can't do it as we did. Yeah. Classic uh, Very well, midway Lord. slash another realm, not away. quite following what what they've set up. Who are you? I'm Cobra. No one crosses this bridge. No one. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> the voice acting, Cobra, man. I just got the signal from Cabal. The ambush has begun. I told you, they got you paid a sandwich to do this. Dragon I'm gonna have to finish you. <laughs> I mean, give me a pop tart and I'm down. I mean, just look at the fucking game, man. Like, I'll give him that. It was colorful. In terms of, like, the, the health bar and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, one thing that, too, well, like, saying that 3 era had that MKX, David, for example, didn't have was color. Yeah. Father? And they were not lacking in that at all. Where am I? This is a training area. This was always father, weird to you? me, but I guess it kind of makes sense. No, I have to try to teach you a little bit. I am merely a reflection of your father. My purpose is to train you for your That's coming challenge. Would you tell me what this is all about? You will find yeah. your answers within the temple. This monolith was created to help you hone your fighting skills. At least they found that we're training scattered for this. throughout the realms. They can only be activated by you or your brother. But I'm not gonna lie, now, if I could, then, I let us get begin it. your training. I'm trying to. I'm raising up your audio. Was I inside the that way, uh, hear you a bit How better. Is that possible? Okay. Maybe Father will explain when I find him in the temple. I do. I do actually like. I, I do like the story. I know this game has a lot of. It gets a lot of criticism, and fair, fair enough. But I do actually like the story with to it, like the way it's told and everything. Like this, I like this stuff. See, like, hopefully I can see his fight. Yeah, weapons like instant kills, and over to the left, see balls helmets. Yeah. I love that. That's what I meant by capture helmets. Where you got to go, you get to find like cool stuff like that. I have no intention of joining you and your thugs. You will regret your decision. Yeah, and one thing I will say is. The gameplay itself, when you were actually doing the beat em up parts, it wasn't deep, but it was really, really fun. I mean, it's kind of like a very basic version of like God of War. Yeah. The weapons I'm in, mean, everything kind of looks like it. And the actual places you go around don't look bad. They're they're relatively detailed. You said what? No, I said like the the actual locations themselves are actually really nice too. Oh yeah. Yeah. The arcing was all great at the time. They're still good, to the, pretty good today, but it's like they were amazing back then. Well, I, I think the difference is they did a lot more with a lot less back then, whereas now they have so much, so much better technology, and yet they still, I think it's like they go too far with a lot of the costumes. Add too much to them, make them too detailed. All right. As weird as that sounds. So first time seeing this, who did you think that was? I thought it was Reptile. Dang. Same for you? Yeah. Yeah, and choose one. Don't do a scavenger hunt bullshit. 
<laughs> Would have been smarter, probably. Saved everybody a lot of time, too. Well, it's like, Luther, I have to decide to my savior, the, my successor, and like, then pick me or him, or your other him legitimate son. As long as you choose, and get this over with. Why the hell can't go to complete war to stab your hunt and then other BS? What'd you think of this whole part? Like, did you enjoy being on Sector ship? Um, I didn't mind it. It was nice to see something new, because I think Sector hasn't really been in a main game since 3, keep in mind. So it's nice to see him actually do something. Yeah, him actually running something, too. Not just kind of being there, but also... Doing something and really having a, poor, uh, a pretty big role. To the point where he has his own stage and his own entire location. Yeah. And I gotta say, like they they do they do a really good job of, of putting in the set pieces and all that. It is it does feel like you're watching, you're going through a, a good story. Of course, it has its problems, oh, yeah. but it feels like you're going through something that's actually building. I mean, it really does seem like God of War and Mortal Kombat I have to find mixed together. And you had you don't have quite time events, but it was still nice. Yeah. <coughs> Those stances, man. Amazing. That was the one thing I had a problem with, too, the story mode. They were so quick to say fight at the end of each sentence. Yeah. And they kind of get annoyed. Like, like, it's almost a rarity they didn't say fight. Finally, I found a way out of the warship. I'll have to get back to the portal and return to the cave. Maybe Orin has some idea who these strange warriors are. I can't help but wonder if my brother Dagon has encountered the same foes I have. I do like the fact they made him extremely naive, too. Well, he'd been asleep for over 10,000 yeah. years. Na naive isn't the right word. I wanted, What I basically want to say is that, like, it's literally him. He's not like, you know, he doesn't know. He's literally just going through and has no idea what his brother's become. He doesn't know about his brother, he doesn't know about this whole quest, he just know that he's being attacked by every which way right now. Um, hit pause real quick. Yep. I already used a restroom. Yeah, go ahead. Alright, just leave me alone. Just yep, do your thing.
Alright, you tell me when. Alright. Oh, oh. Alright, so I'm getting settled now. Got a whole new chair. <laughs> Sorry. Foot wrist. Situated. Well, the door is not as long as I stop it. I'll take it still. Okay. One moment. Alright. Three, two, one, go. What do you think about the dragon? Cool concept, but they don't do much. They're the equivalent of Raiden. Yeah, fair enough. They don't really do anything. That whole little spot right there was that will require. Um... He just blocks up and didn't say nothing else again. Like he's literally did what Raiden did in MK9 where they said, well, what should we do? He said, yes, I think that would be best. And you didn't tell us nothing. Yeah. Just kind of let things happen. Yeah. Woo! So uh -oh. used to. Ice troll. Oh, Ice Beast, my bad. Or we in troll. I think it was like a ice beast, yeah. <laughs> I feel like the the video is sped up, right? For the fighting? No, it was kind of that fast, too. Yeah, I, I remember it being slightly slow. Yeah, they were like, like skip scenes, but that's it. Let's get the fight scene, but yeah. Poor guy. How funny is this stuff just kind of floating in the background? So what? I said, how funny is that there's just stuff floating in the background in the cutscene? They didn't have the budget yeah, to just, like take it out. Weird. I will say I don't I do not miss playing in a three D three D arena at all. I don't mind it sometimes. Really? I don't know, I never liked it. Like I like for nostalgic reasons. Like maybe for like MK Deception and Armageddon I like but for Deadly Alliance I didn't care for. Yeah, maybe because it was a bit more fluid in the in the second in the deception and in Armageddon, it was a little bit better. Yeah, well, that's what they came up with breakers and stuff like that. Yeah, they added a few things to make it a bit more, a bit deeper. Literally getting used to 
game. Uh, not blackmail, but you know what I'm looking. You know what I'm thinking of. That's the thing I feel I talk to most people. Like god damn it, <laughs> just move. Well, he's mad too, but you got mad at him. Now I will wait another thing I wouldn't mind is seeing more about this clan the Tango. Mm hmm Red Dragon get the Lincoln Quay. Black Dragon. It's just. We got a whole other clan here that we never get to. To Kui, we got them as well. We never get to see what they are about. Yeah, that was always, I think, one of the biggest regrets of them rebooting. Like, I didn't dislike the idea of them rebooting, but they should have just, like, actually rebooted as opposed to just retelling. And because I feel like there was so much potential. There was so much stuff going on. Well, really, I don't think they knew what they wanted to do between being a retelling or a reboot. Yeah. And that never leads to good. That, they say it was a retelling, and then they... Oh, the reboot once they realized that it didn't work. Another reboot, MK9 is, is decent. Oh, come on, you should show the depth scene on that one. I mean, there's not much to this damn, but I mean, we should have seen, I think we should have seen some about it. Yeah. Woonly, or something like that. <laughs> the memories, man. I, I don't remember this too well. Like I remember what happens, but the names of the fighters, the, the opponents, and stuff like that. It's just kind of funny. Dang, I don't either, but... <laughs> <laughs> you can't be. I mean, I don't think that the Link is their rival. He's like their like. Link Wei doesn't give two shits about this. The Link Wei beats the shit out of them whenever they like act like there's an actual They're rivalry. <laughs> Because the problem is that a rivalry requires to actually be competitive. <laughs> I don't really think there's much competitive about that. And this storyline too. So with this being said right here, I will explain what his whole thing is. So. We don't know much about Ray now at all because Ray is never in the game. Unless it's true, unless it's like a game with everyone there, he's in the game then. But, um, Quan Chi should not pretty much told Ray about his heritage and then told him that if he really wants to prove that he's rightful, he's for the rightful throne in the beginning yet to much kill his half brother before. Um, they kill Blaze. And he'll be the next, be the, the protector slash guy to begin with. Yeah. yeah. But, but the thing is, like, pretty much a lot of things, not, a lot of things are not answered. But, the, um, if they're on the forces of darkness, that they were pretty much recruited by Shanat Quan Chi. Versus Sports of the Light after Giant Cage was eavesdropping and was having visions about Shinnok. 
he started to recruit the forces of light from his get to Adenia. Because he overheard Shinnok after he, before he beat him up. And that's literally all, that's pretty much like how you, ex there's a couple other things that people who don't make sense that same format, like the Tara and, the Tara and Astra, but literally everyone else is pretty much the equivalent of that. For the most part, yeah. They do explain how something else. Like, well, like for example, Sing Song is similar to that, but his spider tells like how he came back to life. That's all. And his plan. So only after the whole thing with Onaga, Harry Jacks came back and he they oh yeah, you did fatalities in the game. Frost. Yep. But she wouldn't recognize Sub Zero. Well, she thought everyone else she killed before Sub Zero, remember? Oh, that's right. She went full retard. <coughs> but he looks nothing like Sub Zero. Yeah, he's not even dressed like him. He's not even wearing blue. Nowhere on his costume is blue. Yeah, well. Writing. It's difficult. Oh no, but it's just probably you summing up to her being delirious or crazy. Because you can read this text after this. Taven Final Blow knocked Frost out of her delirium. You are not the one I seek. She muttered embarrassingly and left the chamber. An empty room. Maybe I can rest. So it's not like they did bad right and they just like she was crazy. But you will not get past me. And you are See now, even though I like the uh, the um the, the primary for daily lives, I do like this version better too. And this is really good. Just build it. <laughs> if we ever do this again, like streaming wise, every time they say fight in the story mode, we will have to get shot, okay? Sounds good. Not today, because well I'm already I'm not streaming right now. But when we do this again, we are inevitably going to find a way to play these games and stream. Yeah, I don't have any alcohol in, in my house right now, anyway. Ah, uh, I do. I have a whole bottle of tequila. Mm, I'm not really a tequila guy myself. Oh, I'm not either, but I just bought it the other day. That animation is pretty, uh, pretty shit. Oh yeah, but... But the armor is pretty cool. Oh yeah, like... I mean, I think Taven would be a great character, and if he was written better, it wasn't like written as Mary Sue. Yeah, I, really I think like no one likes Dagon too. Yeah. Well, the thing, no one likes. It's not like no one likes Luke Kane, but no one likes the, the superhero cup, uh, cop character. The unbeatable character, yeah. The perfect. Yeah. Who can't be? They can't do anything wrong. I eat Cassie. Yeah. Or Devor, apparently, as well. Friends of yours, 
Like, this is an interesting from Sub Zero. What? Freezing everybody like that. Well, no, because he. Um, in MK3, all you MK3, the classic Sub Zero has that ability. Yeah, what I mean is, like, you know, they never really show it in anything else. How dominant of a move it is. Well, it's like the whole teleporting thing, too. They don't they pick and choose to put it in there. <clears throat> honestly, if you give Sub Zero a teleport, he's probably going to be OP now. Basically. At that point. Yeah. But I feel like this, even this way, <clears throat> even this way of a story mode works better than what we have now. Absolutely, it's not even close. The only issue is that it, like, is that it can be a bit too, too focused on one person. But if they could do something like this, where they also did a good job of teach of telling stories of other people, then, then that'd be perfect. And then their ending can be like a prelude of what's happened next. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, this thing with Smoke and New Cybot, though, they are. He goes to Serena anything. After she defeats. After she messed up Zero, he gave her a way to track and show her how to get to the Link Wave Temple. So, after she became a demon and saved Quiet Link, he blasted her with ice and left her there. He was because she was a demon. He didn't know what she looked like, who she was. New Smoke and Quan Chi all pretty much like when I say that they pretty much um what's the word they verbally or like mentally abused the hell out of her. And pretty much made put a spell on her so she came back to just being um servant of Quan Chi. Which they she gave uh, new smoke the the device to track the Lin Kuei Temple. So that's how they got here. What were those? You will join but or you will die. We shall see. <clears throat> Interesting there that it seems like Bihan killed uh, Kai Lang, right? Yeah. Oh shit. Is it me or is he darker than normal? He looks way darker than I remember him being. Like even in MK Deception, but yeah. I feel like this is not I think this is like I think it's like a PC version of it though. I might be wrong, but it looks different, doesn't it? Yeah. Well I know there's one point where they had like a little outline around where somebody else was standing. Well, I they've shown X a few times, so I think it's on the PlayStation. Okay. Somebody thought that was the Mahila is, but no, it's Shard Mountain. Not yet. 
It's in charge loudspeaker. I would like to know how to do that before I say the prayers to go to the school. Maybe the ones who stole my father's soul. Who do you prefer, Taven or Dagon? I want to say Taven. I think he is like the hero, but also you don't really get much. From all you get from uh, Dagon is that he's just a dick and selfish in multiple way, more ways than one. Mm -hmm. Like there's no redeeming this character. Hey, look, the guy we've been waiting for for, <laughs> for, for, for over a decade. Finally get to see him somewhere. He's basically Taven beating the hell out of the entire roster. In a way, but this one I can explain as well. So, <laughs> as I mentioned already, Johnny Cage fought not, and no one believes him either. Neither does Fujin, for example. But after Kenshi confirmed what's going on with the whole Edenian thing, with the whole... Um, well, that was weird just now. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing with um, the Pyramid of August. Um, Fujin realized that his that sons are in danger. So instead of trying like to attack or kill them, he's trying to get them back to Edenia where they are safe and where they can actually finish the quest there. <laughs> instead of saying that, though, he just fights them instead. I mean, he made it pretty clear. That's thing too, like it wasn't like it was revealed and then you had time to like to get to, like for like was a betrayal or anything, it's literally like, oh, I'm the bad guy. That's literally all Dagon was in the story. Yeah, they didn't really give you any time to digest it. Yeah, or it's literally it. like here, here I am, I'm evil. Even playing the game the first time I feel like it was rushed. Yeah. Which you kind of, uh, they explain his whole role later as well. But still. Who are you? I know what I am. I am Taven. Do you know what the Red Dragon are doing here? Who are you? Seems they're trying to create real Red Dragon. They've been able to create a hybrid of man and lizard using their own clan members as test subjects. And who were left? They were trying something new on me. Kano sounds more British than Australian here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't care about that bright though either, keep in mind. Definitely not. False well, They started the the mutant transformation. Just because they finish doesn't mean like you're not already uh, affected by it though. He doesn't realize it. So they've never finished, like they did what they need to do. You're screwed now, dude. Now, here's the thing I that we were talking about in the um, Discord over at the Lost. Not the Lost. Um, uh, the lore 
a portion of Nethercast. Yeah. Um, and the thing we were talking about is, like, how could you redo certain characters that you're brought them back? So, for example, they did, I asked a question about Kira yesterday, and the way they would do that would be if, with him, they with her, they would, like, make her more of a of a tactician. Oh, someone else has been waiting for it for years, too. Serena. It's like the reunion tour. I mean, yes, I don't get everyone's here, but we won't see them again unless it's like cutscene, apparently. Kia, Serena, Kaka. But yeah, like I said, after I already explained the whole thing with Serena, how she came back to be evil again. Mm-hmm. She's been high controlled by Quan Chi. And there he is, the goat. Get away from him, lizard. This is his best costume, though, I will say this. Yeah, I like it, actually. This is one for Shaolin Monks. Yeah. So, you know, we, I hope you didn't a memory know this, because there's a lot of shots we're going to take. <laughs> we're going to be pretty messed up, yeah. I'm going to be streaming this as well, so yeah. I don't see us surviving. Uh, my best friend's wife, she can drink tequila like it's water. Is she uh, Latina? Yep. She drinks yeah. water like it's tequila. They have a better tolerance, apparently. You're injured. Well, listen to me though, I thought she drinks water like tequila, but like she can't drink it. Ugh. Oh, really? But she can drink yeah. tequila like water. Yeah. Alright, fair enough. What happened? I know, I think tequila is one of the worst ones. I will say this, Delia and uh, Argus, they remind me of Raidenism, they just fail every time they do something. Yeah. Well, it's like, why go around this long about way of doing something and just like... Uh. That's the other thing too, like, I want to know how Dagon killed his parents. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, it's like, there's a lot of God Award type of stuff to it. Dagon looks like, I mean, if, if you put Dagon and, Kray and the Quan Chi together, you get Kratos. I will return to help you. There is no Oh, I get it. The red dragon because Corrin's um uh, a red Squirt, dragon. Yep. So if Taven Way got enough version was evil, he would have been named the gold dragon. Or the yellow dragon. Yeah, I think red's cooler though. Oh yeah, but I'm saying like still. Like they're not they don't think about this stuff like it's like, oh this is so uh well thought, like no. He's a pet, the guy who runs Red Dragon has a pet dragon that's having to be red. Yeah. Dagon's a fan. Oh, you don't even know, buddy. Elegars are trash. <laughs> Basically useless. Now we're in hell. We're on the dr on the pool of the hell. <laughs> Fair pool enough, man. Of the hell. I respect the effort. I almost said highway. I'm on a pool. 
We gotta do more music things together one of these days. Well, I agree. We just gotta kind of figure out how to do it exactly. Oh yeah, we have no idea what the fuck we're doing, but yeah. Is that shit up? These things writing lyrics. Well, I think that's probably doable. I would say the hardest part is the actual music. Oh uh, no, we're just we're just we won't, we won't make money off of it. Yeah, that's for damn sure. Nobody's gonna. Nobody's gonna. We we own none of the music. We just own on the lyrics. Yep. So another thing I, I found out recently, and I'm not sure about this part, but I think Lee Maid's dead. Because of the fact that um, after everything was done with uh, after Onaga, uh, Shao Kahn came back to life, and he... So this is what happened. And we can't, oh, let's go ahead and pop a pause real quick on this. Okay. This one's actually like, actually one of the better, better stories. So, oh, we're almost done with this too. Nice. Um, Shang Tsung's story of it is that after he died, and when rather Raiden killed him, um, his soul is bound to Shao Kahn no matter what. Like in life or death, his soul belongs to Shao Kahn. Mm -hmm. So. He replays his loyalty to him again, and Shao Kahn and Goro goes on a rampage and kill Li Mei's whole, her whole village, and Shang Tsung can just take all the souls, bring him back to his youth again. Yeah. <coughs> so that's what I'm thinking. Like they didn't confirm if Li Mei die or not, but she's in the Nether Realm, so. You would think so. You think that's kind of no. As we will learn in a second, that these are a bunch of these are illusions from Shinnok. Those people who like came in are fighting, but at the same time, like they don't tell you who's the illusion, who's not. But I don't think none of them are really illusions because a lot of people are technically canonically dead. But and that's the thing too. Like I think we may either dead or she like undead or she is. Um, this is another illusion, but I know her village is destroyed. And they're in hell. Not much I can't confirm. Yeah, there's actually a lot of okay. stuff, in, a lot of interesting stuff in this, in this conquest. Oh yeah, stuff I didn't even know that I read that happened until someone else told me about it. So I was just like, all right, I'm kind of glad we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Playing stuff. Right, you ready? Sure. Yep. Whenever you're ready. All right, one second. I like controlling this for my phone. It's so much funner. All right, three, two, one. I am an elder god no longer. I have been cast down, punished for involving myself in the affairs of mortal. What do you think about Shinnok's costume in this? I like it. It's one of his better ones, right? Yeah, better. Like I said, I told you before, I think 4 and Armageddon did better than... Well, this version of Armageddon, not his primary one, where he's like wearing like drapes and stuff. Yeah. It's better than what they did at MKX, in my opinion. For sure. At least the alternate one, with the one at the end of the story mode. You competed with one another. Well, yeah, like the devil here. Yeah, that's the one. Because, again, he's a god. You don't think of them being strippers. Like, <laughs> Reagan and Fujin apparently are nowadays. That's a good way to put it. Now this part right here was, I think the story overall was fun. I like it. This was fun to play, but it was kind of weird helping Shinnok. Oh yeah, well that's the thing, you see why in the end, but still. Yeah, yeah. Well this whole thing was, only people who knew about the whole thing with Blaze was the Elder Gods. 
So Shinnok was the elder god before uh, Tame and then went, went to rest. Yeah, so he was he already knew all this stuff. Yeah. So Shinnok knew this before they could. Also, I feel like you never had more than enough life. You never had enough life for this. It was this was a difficult one to do. Well, yeah, facing the ice beasts, it was like you never. You feel like you didn't have enough life to do it. Yeah. And also, like, it's a puzzle as well because you don't know what's going on. And, like you're not gonna get. You're not gonna get anywhere. And I'm terrible at puzzles, so. You can imagine. And you see, this, and every, almost every demon has more power, more life than you. Careful, Taven. This one is most unpredictable. You know him? I am Havoc, cleric of chaos. Shinnok will not regain control of anything so long as I draw breath. Havoc have nothing to go off of. He's just here. Yep, didn't really give him much to work with. <coughs> I do miss that move, though. I gotta say, look, I, I liked both of their gameplay, Taven and uh, and Dagon. I think I liked da Dagon's more because it was more defensive and it was just kind of more of a change of pace. Oh, no, we about Havoc's move where he like twists his whole body around. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Havoc's moveset is also really cool, really creative. Now, the other problem I was saying we had with Taven, though, while I was talking about the whole um, putting 3D characters, 3D era characters in new games, it is hard because look at Taven's powers are earth, fire, and time based. Because later in the, in the conquest mode, he has a move where he can stop time. Yeah. But he doesn't get to. But I think we have Gears who have that same power now. They made him kind of redundant, you know? Yeah. A lot of different people have a lot of these moves. And like, now I think Shiva is dead, too. So that's why I think that they're just under his control at this point. Anyone who's still dead, at least. Well, they were just kind of trying to put everybody in there, no matter what. He's not as stupid as Shijinku. He's not as stupid, but he definitely does some dumb stuff. Well, that's the thing. He doesn't. He's been asleep for over ten thousand years. Yeah, he doesn't have any context. Yeah. I said, like, like for example, if Itai was starting doing stuff like that, that would be like Shijinku. Yeah. Uh, Is 
I always like this the Shinnok and Dagon kind of combo. Yeah. What's your favorite stage or like area in the game in Conquest mode? Oh, there's a stage? I they don't care for none of them. They're just all bland. But it has to be a tie between our world and the North Pole. Mm. I can see that. They're definitely both one of the, one of the better ones. So to briefly speed this up real quick to Melina, so after she, well, she was preparing to be Katana for her, still up to the last moment. And after Shao Kahn came back, she gave her both the throne of, of our world back to him. And her new goal is to take over Edenia now, after Shao Kahn a little taste of power. Yeah. So they change her a little bit. Yeah. Well, another thing to keep in mind is, so, Onaga is pissed off at Shujinko for pretty much defeating him. And he doesn't trust Shao Kahn. So he uses Melina's status as Pretend Katana to lure Shinko to the back. So he can use him as a bargaining chip to convince, to convince Onaga to work with him. Shujinko ever the confident motherfucker. I mean, I get it, but I just, I still don't care for him. Agreed. Another one. I know, it's not it yet. Even a fake version of Shao Kahn is, is terrible. Oh yeah, this one's awful. <laughs> a little puzzle here with shit. Oh yeah. I can't remember how he was. Did you do the fireballs at the portal or did you just... I don't remember. I don't remember... I don't... 
I don't remember. I, I remember a lot of it, but I don't remember playing through it, the actual playing it itself. What are you doing here? I think I don't respect Gore right now because he's supposed to be like the best, the best, and he literally got snuck on by him. It's like <laughs> enjoying the enjoying the view. Like what the fuck? He must have been thinking about something. I, and I, I don't know. I don't think we need to go too far into what he was thinking about. The animation sucked, though. Yeah, I should. I mean, not surprising, I guess, concerning the game. Embarrassing for Goro. Huh? But we do get one good thing in a second. That's right here. Well done. Those were elite guards. Rayco! Why can't we get him in the game? I don't know. He's so fucking cool. I know! But I think someone else shall. One she. Ah, yes. She is in the next room with the others. As much as I would like to see him die, I have been charged to protect the Emperor's allies. I am Reiko, General Shao Kahn's army. The Emperor could use warriors such as yourself. As a rule, I don't ally myself with egotistical madmen. <laughs> I'm call for. I'm afraid I will have to kill you. I know, I just... I would love to have Rick on the game just to see what they would do with him, but I'm also scared to have him in the game to see what they would do with him. There's a solid chance that they'll completely fuck it up. Well, he's my thing is my worst threat question was that like, he's literally like the combination of Noob and Shao Kahn. Yeah. So what do they really do with that? Well, that's the thing. He's I he's no longer like it makes sense though. He's a part of the Brotherhood of Shadows, and he's literally like. Oh, this is one of my favorite scenes. Yeah. Like yeah, it's a great way to instill instill confidence in a, in an alliance. No, my only problem with this whole thing with being in Indiana, it makes sense why they did because Indians are long lived. But the problem is that, um, how the fuck did no one know about this? Doesn't make doesn't really make a lot of sense. I mean, yeah. Oh, this is the scene I was talking about the other day about Reagan. Yeah. By the way, like, I'm sorry, but if an actual alliance had two extremely, you know, powerful bosses and two and a sub boss plus a basic sub boss as in Quan Chi, I don't think anybody's beaten that alliance. Yeah. So yes, so another thing is after Raiden brought back Yu Kang's corpse, 
Shinnok made him a deal, which he doesn't trust Shinnok either. But if he pretty much six, uh, works with him in that alliance, that he would not work. He would protect. Earth. He will leave Earth from alone. Which I can understand why he would accept technically. Yeah. He doesn't trust Shinnok, but he'll take the easy deal. He'll take the he'll take the chance. Yeah. Well, this raid you probably could take Shinnok with eat with these. Yeah, I would think so. The whole problem with, with him is that he always was held back by his humanity. Okay, getting close to the end. I remember it being a lot longer, but I guess without, with, without the beat him up part of it, it's pretty right. short. The game was harder, if you mind. That's yeah, what I that's felt true. A lot of it was redoing stuff. Oh, this was a good. Yeah, see, again, no one likes the Elder Gods. Yeah, because they're, they're useless, and what they do do is pretty much just disgusting for everybody. Well, don't people over. They're like a weird they, mob. They gave you literally no life in this game. Yeah. Corpse. Well done, Taven. Dagon. I was hoping Scorpion Dagon. would kill you and spare me the effort, but it looks as though I will have to finish you myself. Blaze! Why did you interfere? The quest has been corrupted. All did not go exactly as my creator had foreseen it. You are in the wrong location. I will transport you to the rim of the crater where the final battle will take place. Can conclude when one of you defeats me there in combat. We must make haste. Many warriors are gathering. If I am hated by one of them, who will steal the prize and the true purpose of the quest will have failed. Armageddon will be upon you all. I want nothing to do with this quest. My business is with Dagon. We are all bound to the quest. You think of the realms that we decided today. Then let's get this over with. I have waited an eternity for this moment. When this is over, I am going to finish you. How did we... Dagon? You used to be faster than me. Last time we raced through Father's Temple, I believe you won. It seems like only yesterday. It was yesterday. I suppose it was But I was awakened prematurely. Over the millennia, I've grown much faster, much stronger. This time, my victory is assured. The only thing that is assured is that you will pay for killing mother and father. Yes, I killed you. I had to. Lord Shinnok warned me that they had decided to assist you. You killed them over the prize? With the very weapons Father gave us to use against Blaze. And now I will use them to destroy you. Fight! That's the thing he didn't have a mind of his own really. He later was just a pawn of Shinnok. Don't say that. Shinnok used Dagon over Taven and said Dagon woke up first. Yeah.
can't wait to play this tomorrow. It's pretty weird. I, I, I wouldn't have expected to be excited about based off of this, but I am. I mean, at least you get to play. I think, though, still. So. At least you get to play Deception. I think it's a better game. I would trade you right now. Yeah. That, that would screw us over because neither one of us, neither one of us could actually make him work. Well, I could. I have both PAL and NTSC or NTSC. All of them. That many fighting in one place. This cradle here, I mean, in which place. This is the elder gods had ordered your father to orchestrate a solution. He decided to kill us all when the time came. He decided to kill our new diminished quick combatants of their special abilities. For some of his special abilities, you're going to death suffer. In the end, they concealed our contacts between you and the other. A victor would unleash one of two solutions. Like a coin toss, one side would disarm the other forces. The other would destroy them all. Which side of the coin am I? It is Which side of the coin am I? You are the most the catalyst. The fate of the combatants will be revealed when our battle is done. So, by defeating you, I could be killing them all. They will be killing them all. Whichever outcome you are receiving the weapons, but you must not let anyone else come back. Then allow me to win, and we'll put an end to this. Not to win, and we'll put an end to this. I must actually avoid the Take your sword, walk through the archway, and take the quest. Oof. Big moment right here. Well, I think that his sword is completely different than what they said that he had. He took from, he stole from Paven. But also another thing too. It would have been a little bit more cooler if you had looked through the entire game without your sword until this last moment. I think so, for sure. I mean, it would have been cheese balls as fuck, but it's like... Well, I'm better than this. Well, I mean, it's still good. This was still good as well, I'm saying, like, in general. That would have been, like, a good, like, mechanic thing to do. That's what they, that's what they should do more often in games. Like, there's actually a rhyme and a reason for certain things. It would add a more uh, importance to it, I think. Well, for example, like, you see, when Jax is fighting one woman, you don't get his gun at all. You see, pretty much made him feel useless without the gun. He feels good without the gun. And you get 11 with the whole song here with her little black, her gauntlets, you don't have them, so she can't use any of the moves. What do you think, I think it's like a better concept. Oh, wow, this guy, they lost to Blaze 11 times before this. Oh, I didn't know it was so <coughs> Did you have a hard time with Blaze? I'm gonna say yes, but give my like to that was when I was in uh fifth and fourth grade. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like he was the most one of the most cheese of the bosses. Uh, no, Dark Khan was worse, I believe. I, had, I don't even count Dark Khan, he's a cunt. Dark Khan had the extra shield from Shao Khan, yeah, I think. He's fucking cheese. This is the ending that you that you speak of. This bullshit where they just kind of do these little forms. It's supposed to be canon, but yeah. this is what happened. Yeah, I really do not like these kind of endings.
All right. Well, that's it. That is it for the yep. story. Um, I guess all I have, really, all I really have to say about the story is like overall, the biggest issue with it is that it ends up becoming not canon. So that definitely sucks. But overall, like the to to play through it, it's a fun, it's a fun alternative to doing arcades and playing Mortal Kombat. It's just a fun completely different way to play Mortal Kombat than than uh in any other uh any other game really. I guess Shaolin Monk, sure, but I'm talking about like among the main series. <coughs> it's the, one, it's the right. most, one of the most unique ways to play it, so I think it gave it a, a very unique flavor for it and it made it very fun for that reason. All right. No, I agree. And I said, and replayability, gameplay wise, it doesn't have much. But the only thing we'll say about this one you can do is the story mode, Armageddon, the core conquest mode. Yeah. Like, if you get to literally rate the 3D era and replayability, and this is including uh, DC because it's technically on the can timeline, because MKA technically. It would be um, Deadly Alliance, Deception, DC, then Armageddon. Yeah, I think I, I, don't, pretty, I, think I agree with that, yeah. The Deadly Alliance that you discover already, the only extra thing you can do besides arcade mode, and Conquest is literally a one-time thing and done, is test your mind, test your sight. And that's not random. I don't even do that to get through the arcade mode. Yeah, that Deception, really it has the puzzle combat. The only replay mode that you will play that, that would work sort of was puzzle combat. Because as you beat the conquest, that's all you. As you beat the conquest, and unlock everything. And that's all. You really you can go on YouTube and play and look at the endings if you really wanted to. What's next? DC. We know why. What's the problem with DC? We can talk about that at a later date. But other than that, the problem is that. The more comes DC, like the game, uh, the gameplay is good. Don't get me wrong, but it just felt like it was no fun. Out. It was like everything else just seemed totally t- toned down. There wasn't more combat. Yeah, there was no emotion to it either. There was no flair. Yeah. Definitely didn't feel like MK. And of course, I and guess then, it's because there was DC characters, they had severe limitations. And Armageddon, it feels like MK. Its gameplay is better than what it was. Um, five years prior, uh, you have motor combat, which is always a blast to play with some other people if you really wanted to. You can play online with it. Um, I'm trying to think of one more. Thing. Oh, and the conquest. You you won't learn anything new from the conquest, but you can replay it if you wanted to. <laughs> so after you get the conquest stuff, yeah. Yeah, well, no, there's 60, but if you don't catch them all, you can go back over, but you got to start from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But any closer remarks from you, though? No, just that this game, I mean, rightfully so, it has a lot of criticisms, but I feel like it does also have a few good things about it. So a game that um, compared to, of course, uh, Deception and stuff like that, not quite as much replayability, but still a decent entry. I just feel like um, they they didn't do the right things in terms of gameplay. And I think if they'd had a smaller roster with more, you know, personality to each character and really just more to do for each character, then they would have had a lot better of a chance. But unfortunately... Um, this was kind of like their Hail Mary to just kind of go out in a blaze of of just craziness with all the characters. So that's pretty much well, all we're in a situation. It was a situation where we don't know when or when, when we are going to come back or not. So let's go ahead and end it for now. And we can just pick up from where we left off. That was the original intention, at least from our, our point of view. Was. But they went a different route. And... I, I there's another thing to like. I want to always reiterate because we just finished another huge chapter of the story. Um, we don't 
we don't not not like the we don't hate the new the uh, another own game at all. Don't get me wrong. There are some things we like about what game, what we had in the old stuff, and we just wish that we could see those things again. The only problem we have with this whole situation is it comes to the point where we say, look at Armageddon. We had 61 characters on the roster. I think that's including Meat, Blaze, and Chameleon with a K on the Wii. And we saw what they did with there. They have way too many characters, and so many don't have a don't even have a spot on the roster. That they don't need to be on the roster at yeah. times. Since then, we have added. I want to say what was it, eight or nine people in MKX? Uh, I think it was right. Cassie, eight, yeah. Jackie, Devorah, Cameron. Huh? I think it was eight. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say it real quick. Let me know if I forget anyone. Jackie, Cassie, Takeda, Kung Jin, Devora, Kung, I mean, Kolo Khan, Ferator, Aaron Black. Yep, that was eight. Yeah, Plus it. three more. Plus three more in, oh no, four more in uh, Devora, not Devora, uh, Cetrion, Garrus, Collector, and Chronica. So 12 people in the past, since 2011. So now 61 plus 12, that's 73? Yeah. So we have 73 characters now, and we got to figure out a point in the next, in the next review to put those people in. And it's over more than a half, a handful. It's way, like, saying, it doesn't even count. And we haven't got to, like, how many people do we really miss out on these games going forward? Yeah. So who cares? Yeah, we don't. So now we, not only anyone that literally sat down and count, like, how many characters did not go in this game, in this uh, Netherum Studios version of games at all. <coughs> And I'm not going to count DLC in the fact because the, unless the only person I count DLC wise is Tanya because she actually had a part in the story. Or even Rain, when he was DLC, had no part in the story. Yeah, they, they, they do a pretty poor job of putting people in there with context and really having actually something to do with it which is i think something they should definitely work on definitely work on but now Um, that we have 73 people to pick from and people keep making new characters so that's gonna be a problem yeah so you either do a game like this where there was so many limitations from a gameplay point of view or people have to miss out and i personally would always vote for people missing out this is just a mess but like we're missing out on a lot of good things too like we're missing out on Reiko, we're missing out on Fujin, supposedly. We might get this in a couple of months or so. I don't know. I don't care at this point. I just want something. Yeah, it's but at the same story. time, is it better to get a just a poorly, a very, very poorly done version of one of those guys, or is it better to get, you know, mm-hmm. nothing at all? I don't know. Uh, it's... Oh, I wholeheartedly agree with you, though, man. Like, I'd rather them do it good, but it's like. That's what I mean, though. Like we need like a sec- separate branch. For sure, for sure. Hopefully, that's what <laughs> John Tobias is is doing with the new Here's studio in San Diego. We don't know that for sure. That's like a hundred percent, but like hopefully that's where they like, end up going. I think that's kind of everybody's dream. That's when it comes to MK fans. Yeah, that's the dream, but again, we don't know what's truly going on. Yeah. Still, something we still see something concrete saying this is what we're the project we're working on. And then yeah, hell, and this thing I don't. Well, I think what a lot of people get screwed and get I'd say the wrong thing on is that if that they want Tobias to much because you know, Tobias left before the three D era happened. I'm not saying that he's not a good writer if he wants to take can to it, but let's say he decided to go his own route instead. 
like we get if this is gonna happen, we kind of, if they run whatever they do, we kind of want to make sure like they're on the same page with each other. Yeah. And that they can agree on this stuff as well. Even if the NetherRealm Studios are the lead writers of this of the game going forward, Tobias can at least like he can answer some questions on stuff that need to be done, like. All right, what happened to Tanya and Rain after MKX? What happened to... Where was Jade the entire MKX game? Why wasn't Rain nowhere to be found in MK9? He can do stuff like that. I'm like, but I don't want people like thinking like, oh, well, John Tobias will bring back the life in the game that we've been waiting for. Like, everyone hypes up the 3D era for a reason because they enjoyed it. He had nothing to do with that. <coughs> so whatever he does, he has to from being his, they have to be in agreement with each other. Communication has to be there. And that's something that seems like this is always kind of lacking within the realm. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I guess uh, I don't really have anything left to say other than motor combat. Please come back. <laughs> that would be awesome. Um. All I have to say is you're free to go. Awesome. I can't wait to go to bed. <laughs> it is uh, 1 15. I've been sleeping on for an average of like five hours. And let me tell you, between that and the fact that you can't move past, you know, you can't get get away from your house ever, it's, it's starting to get, it's starting to weigh on me. But luckily, uh, yeah, luckily we got Mortal Kombat to talk about and some other things to do to, to pass the time. So thank you not only to... Thomas, for, of course, being a co-host for this, but also to you guys who, you know, of course, give us a lot of support, and it's uh, it's always good to have something to, to kind of just hang out and chill and, and talk about. Hopefully you guys enjoy it as much as we enjoy doing it. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and uh, let us know if there's anything that we missed and if, any, if there's any other topics they would like this to kind of cover as time goes on. And uh, thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you in the next video. I'm on the portal of hell. Down, down, down. I'm on the portal of hell. Down, down, down. I'm on the portal of hell. Down, down. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs>